What's going on, y'all? Welcome to episode 24 of the Fight Night Forecast, where we highlight, recap, and cover all things boxing. Listen, I know I didn't have an episode for y'all last week slash weekend, but um, I was doing a little bit of traveling. I'm heading back home right now. Um, my little brother, uh, he got engaged recently, and we just did his bachelor party this past weekend. And uh, yeah, it was a good time, good time. I got to uh, go see the Chiefs play for the first time um, in person at Arrowhead. And uh, actually, it's my first NFL game ever, so that was pretty cool. Nice little... Um, little treat there but uh enough about that we had a good time but enough about that let's get into this uh, the past two weeks of boxing man we had some good bouts now i'm talking about october 7th um i know this couple couple weeks ago man we're already probably already on to the next when it comes to boxing anymore um especially with the way they got these cars rolling in but uh but yeah man so this is october 7th you know we had lee wood and uh josh warrington they fought it was a very good bout I thought it was a competitive bout up until Lee Wood um, decided he was going to seal the deal and finish it up. Had a devastating knockout, and um, and yeah, that that division's stacked, man. There's so many good fighters in that division, and uh, the featherweight division that is. And I think there's only bigger bigger bouts coming, you know, down the pike for um, for both Wood and Warrington, man. I mean, I can't see Warrington not possibly beating in the mix again for another title fight, but. Um, you know, Lee Wood just kind of shows his dominance. I think he's ranked like the second best featherweight out there, man. So, um, you know, only big things moving. So um, let's keep it going, though. I want to kind of make this this recap pretty quick just because we're covering the two weeks. But uh, we had a 10-round slugfest uh, with Zerto and um, Joe Smith Jr. I like both guys, too, man. This is kind of a hard fight for me to watch because I really didn't want either guy to lose. But... Um, but yeah, kind of turned into, uh, you know, Zerto having a different style. I was really surprised. It's not really the style that we're used to seeing with, with Zerto Ramirez, but, um, but yeah, you know, he, well, I thought both guys looked pretty good. I think Joe Smith was, you know, coming on with the power and the, the pressure early. I think he might've honestly kind of punched himself out a little bit. He kind of faded those last, those last few rounds, um, Honestly, the second half of the fight kind of faded a little bit, to be honest with you. Zerto was definitely more of a boxer than he normally is. You know, he was being smart, boxing on his back foot, um, doing a lot more moving than he normally does. And I think that just has a, a lot to do with the uh, the fact that um, Joe Smith has a lot of power and um, he's a very dangerous fighter with one punch knockout power. And uh, I think Zerto respected that a little bit, you know, and switched his style up boxing his back foot he was slick obviously he's the southpaw um so you know you kind of get away with being a little slicker but um yeah i thought i was really happy with that fight i don't agree with the 99 91 unanimous decision from all three judges i i don't understand how that could have been a 9-1 round or 9-1 fight but nine rounds to one that is for zerto but um you know i I think at best 6-4 Zerto, maybe 7-3 you could argue, but I don't, I think Joe Smith won those first mate, three, arguably four rounds, and then Zerto kind of took over from there, but I don't know. Judging anymore in this sport of boxing can get a little iffy sometimes, I guess, but, um, but yeah, so saw that coming. And then uh, that those are kind of the two big highlights, really. So yeah, let's let's move on to the uh, to the current weekend of boxing. What we just saw um, go down over this past weekend. We we'll start with we'll, you know we'll start with with, with uh, KSI Tommy Fury um, that card. Honestly, there was some real actually there was some pretty decent bouts on that card, um, but really the main two, the co-main and the main event, were honestly I thought the worst out of all the bouts but um you know we had dylan danis and and logan paul that was kind of a slop fest um danis didn't throw that much and then of course at the end tries to put him in a guillotine
Logan slips out, tries to hammer fist him, and then next thing you know, you got Dennis swinging on the security guards, and everyone rushes the, uh, you know, rushes the, the the ring. That would just seem like I don't know, I don't know what to think of that. I can't tell if it was like kind of a publicity stunt or if you know they really had bad blood. Like I know Dennis whipped a microphone at him at one of the face off. <laughs> They're pretty heated at the weigh-in and stuff. So I don't know. You never know these days with some of this stuff. It's like, you know, is it choreographed? Is it not? Tell me what y'all think, man. You know, I don't, I don't know. There, there could be a lot of bad blood. I know they were, they were speaking ill on each other's like girls and stuff like that. You know, so I don't know. I don't want really to try to follow it too crazy much. I, I'm just, um, you know, I try to stay out a lot of the drama and just try to really stay in the analytics and the, you know, the. Um, the, you know, pretty much the sport of boxing, you know what I mean? So I try to stay out of all that uh, extracurricular activity, but sometimes it's hard to, you know, when it's integrated now so much in the sport of boxing with these influencer guys and all that stuff kind of um, make it a big showing, which I'm not mad at it. it bring, like I said, I, you know, y'all know my opinion of it. I don't mind Jake Paul. I'm not a huge fan of Logan. I think I like Jake Paul because he actually puts the work in, you know what I mean? But uh, I think nonetheless, all these guys bring a little bit more. Um, little more eyes of the sport and more eyes of the sport of boxing I think is um, can never be a bad thing necessarily you know what I mean so keeps keeps boxing alive and uh, and that's what I love so um, but yeah then moving on to, to KSI Tommy Fury um, it kind of that was kind of a weird fight turned into kind of a slug fest or no, a slug fest rather a uh, turned into kind of a, um, a hug fest a little bit where it was like Tommy Fury was something like a one-one-two, and and KSI was hugging him pretty much. And KSI had a weird style, fighting with his hands down, just a weird bout, man. Um, you know, I don't, I don't really know who won that. I'm glad Tommy did, because hopefully Tommy's now just done with this stuff, like he said at the end of the the press conference or the uh, post-fight interview, where he was like, "Yeah, man, he's I'm pretty much just done with this now." You know, so um, I'm, I'm I'm done with the crossover boxing. I just want to fight boxers and enhance his career and all that stuff so i'm all for that man but um you know if he wants to fight jake paul again i'd be okay with that because i think that that's the most legit fight he could you know take if he's going to take a crossover bout you know or whatever you want to call it but um but yeah so nonetheless that was kind of a weird fight tommy fury ended up taking it winning it logan paul won his bout um that card is what it is it's over um, so let's 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 move along. Hey, next up we had a unification bout at 160 between Janabek and uh, Vincenzo Gualtieri, and uh, man, can I say, Janabek? I mean, he's out here, bro. He just systematically breaks his opponents down. I mean, he looked so insanely good, so insanely sharp. Gualtieri was no slouch. Um, very very uh, tough opponent. Champion at 160. Um, I believe had never been stopped in his career. Um, and Janabek just broke him down, man. And and I said it in a pot, you know, either last episode or a couple episodes ago where I'm like, it's crazy to see, you know, Janabek with the style that he has being a Southpaw, you know, um, you know how it is. A lot of Southpaws are kind of like, what I just talked about a minute ago with Zerto, you know, where they box slick, use that to their advantage. You know what I mean? And you got Janabek who just brings it to you, man. And, um, you know, I, I'm going to say this right now, man. I think Janabek might honestly have one of the best uppercuts in the game right now. Um, it's scary how he can land that at will. And he does that, like, pull counter um, uppercut. He got actually caught Gualteri with that, and that was, like, one of the, the, the shots that led up to the, to the, uh, the knockdown. And uh, crazy, dude. But Janabek for sure is, is is the man to see at 160, I believe. Um, you know, he's got two of the four belts now. I know Jamal's got um, one of them as well. I believe one's vacant. I can't remember somebody, or maybe somebody's got it. 
um, you know, how it is all the, you know, this four belt era, it's tough to, to keep up half the time with who's got what belt and who's got, you know, the WBC franchise, WBC regular, you know, all that stuff. So, um, but yeah, but he's the man to see at 116. I'm, I'm gonna go out with a bold prediction, hot take. I think in the next year, Janabek is gonna be on the pound for pound list. I'm calling it right now. Um, especially if he picks up another strap, bro. Eh. But yeah, he uh, he looks really good. He looks really good. Just, just he's got that way of just breaking his opponent down. Um, and he and he's done it in multiple different ways and over multiple different fights. So yeah, dude, the dog man. Um, and uh, I'm excited to see what's uh, what's next for him coming down the pike, you know. So. Um, but yeah, yeah, I was a pretty big fan of the um, of the undercard too for the uh, uh, Janabek uh, Gualtieri card. Um, Kelvin Davis got the dub. Alan Garcia, Kid Kansas got the dub. Um, Richard Torres got the dub. Uh, the co-main was um, Keyshawn Davis. He caught a dub. Um, yeah, and that guy he fought was actually pretty decent. I'm pretty sure, and he had no. I want to say he was undefeated maybe or something but yeah good but that was a good i think that was a great step up for Keyshawn davis i'm excited to see him just keep moving up you know what i mean so um yeah super hyped on that a lot of young talent on that card stack talent and just added to the um you know it really added to the the big night that that uh that janabek had you know so um yeah let's talk about um this upcoming week in boxing october 21st we have Jack Catterall and Jorge Linares. That's gonna be a good bout. Um, both guys are trying to crawl their way back up to a title shot at uh, at 140. And, um, you know, Catterall only having really that big loss to, um, and controversial loss at that to Josh Taylor. Jorge Linares lost to Devin Haney at 135. And, um, you know, Haney, Haney got wobbled in that fight, so, you know, Linares is one of those guys that has some power in both hands and don't knows what to do with him. So that's going to be a good bout there. Then we have Alexis Rocha. He's fighting um, Santillan. That's going to be also on October 21st. That's coming up. Um, going to be a good bout, some young talent there. And then um, October 28th, we got the, you know, pretty key date, Tyson Fury and... Um, um, Francis and Ganu, they're about to duke it out, battle of the baddest over there in Saudi Arabia, they're saying. So um, pretty hyped on that. Obviously, we'll have more of that to come. October 27th, Amanda Serrano is fighting. And that's, I believe, going to be the bout that's um, sanctioned like a men's fight. 12 rounds, I believe, three-minute rounds. So I know normally women's boxing is a little less. I believe it's 10 two-minute rounds. Um, so... Yeah, but this is like the first time since like the early 2000s or something that they're doing women are fighting, um, you know, men's regulation. So it'd be pretty cool. A little history breaking there. Maybe women might go back to boxing more like this. I don't know. We'll see. But uh, going to be exciting nonetheless. I'm tuning in. Um, and, you know, we got some some bigger bouts coming in November. You know, we got um, Shakur Stevens to fight in De, Los, De Los Santos. Uh, on November 16th and, and um, we got Ryan Garcia coming up too in early December fighting Duarte um, so yeah boxing ain't dead yet baby we're, 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 we're finishing this year out strong um, man can't believe we're already almost in November but we won't talk about that years flying already but uh, but yeah man so just want to say thank y'all so much for tuning in sorry that this is kind of a uh, you know quick run through the past couple weeks and the uh, quick look ahead um for the next coming weeks but uh next week will be more of a um you know i'll sit down and get into a little more detail obviously we got the nganu fury fight by that time so we want to get into that a little bit and whatnot but uh you know just had to do a little traveling man had a little do a little family time so i, I just want to make sure i got a little bit of content out to y'all so um didn't want to leave y'all hanging for for a week um and and not know what's going on so um, thank you all so much for tuning in. The gang is only growing. Please like, comment, subscribe if you haven't already. Post notifications if you already subscribed. Let's keep the gang growing, man. Let's do gang activity. 
I appreciate y'all so much. I'm blessed to talk with y'all every week. And I will see y'all in the next one. Peace. Thank you.